One of the things that consistently surprises me about tiny house living is the options that it can afford people. For some, it means living in a tiny house year round, whereas for others, it can provide a really interesting part-time rental opportunity, which allows them to get out and live big in the open wide world. That is exactly what's happened with this next couple in their beautiful tiny house that we're visiting here in California. Hey Bella, how's it going? Hi Bryce, how are you? Great, lovely to meet you. <laughs> Good day Spencer, how nice are you mate? Nice to meet you, very well. This home is just so cool. Thank you. Thank you. How did you both come to be living in a tiny house? Oh man, it's <laughs> a long story I think, right? Yeah. But like, you know, I think it started just by moving to California and all yeah. of a sudden being hit with really high rent and that gave us a big incentive to try and think outside the box. And we just realized that we had spent like $30,000 that year on rent. And it felt like we just flushed it down the toilet. And we thought there had to be something better that yeah. we could do with our money. We're not really city people, I think. We were much more interested yeah. in getting out into nature and having yeah. a mountain property a little bit more south. But it's just totally out of reach for us financially. So we had to come up with something different. To us, it was an opportunity. I mean, we were living in um, the Bay Area, which is so expensive, and we were looking into the housing market, and there was no way we could afford to buy a home, let alone a nice home. We were looking at like starter homes or continuing to rent, but we wanted something of our own. And then we came across tiny homes, and it was a way that we could build the home that we wanted without any of the downsides. Yeah, I think we're kind of freedom chasers at least first, yeah. like we kind of first try and get our freedom and then try and do something. Dig our way out of the financial and then, then pay, you know, then pay for it. But and I think that we saw tiny house is a good way to do that, both with our time and our house and with our finances. We thought that we could kind of tackle both of those at the same time and kind of make big gains. And I think we have. How did you find the parking spot? So we actually found it on Airbnb. We knew mm -hmm. going into it that we wanted to rent out our house. So we were just like scouring Airbnb for people mm -hmm. who look like they had land. Mm -hmm. And we knew while we traveled that we wanted to have our home managed by the people who own the land. So we ended up finding a great couple and they manage it for us while we travel. And right now you live in this tiny house for about one third of the year and then you rent it out for the other two thirds mm -hmm. and that's what funds your travels, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. You know, it takes a little bit of maintenance to take care of and stuff. So we come back for two months in the best times when it's like not the rainy season, but yeah. not the good rental time period. So we kind of enjoy it during the spring and the fall and do maintenance, take care of the house, and then we get to share with other people yeah. the rest of the year and travel. It's working so well. I mean, honestly, it allows us to fund our travels and also to pay off our house a lot more quickly. This house can make us a good amount of money just by having it up on the rental market. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the design of the tiny house. Yeah, I mean, I think for us going into it, we didn't want just a studio on wheels. Mm -hmm. We wanted to build as nice of a tiny house as we could without the compromises and also one that would fit our whole family. We wanted a separate room for our daughter, who was one at the time. And so we have our own bedroom and she's got her own bedroom. Yeah, I think moving into a tiny yeah. home for the first time is a big deal. And we wanted to make sure that we minimize the risk, yeah. that we would love it and not hate it. We figured if there are any areas where there are compromised, that's some spot that you might just really, might dig at you over the long term and you might yeah. regret the decision. So we tried as hard as we could to make a real family home that we could feel comfortable owning and using for like 10 years at yeah. least, you know? What size is the tiny house? Uh, including the loft, the tiny house is 300 square feet. It's on a 26 foot base and then there's a gooseneck platform that goes another seven and a half feet out. Very nice. And with the design, I absolutely love the way that you've got this garage door here, which just completely opens out onto that vista. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we were in California, we had just moved to California, it was really important to make sure that we could use the house like to yeah. the best of, of the climate's abilities. So that's why we wanted the house to open up to the outdoors really easily. We figured that would be a way to also kind of get rid of the claustrophobia of a tiny mm -hmm. house and make sure that it could always feel open whenever we yeah. wanted it to. It kind of lets us be inside and outside at the same time. Yeah, and it gives you like the perfect way to set up a deck yeah. as well, I think. 
Yeah, the deck basically doubles the size of our home, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And we've really tried to spread out outside. Like we've got a dining room table set up, a canvas tent in the back, because we've learned so much of living in a tiny house is living outside. Well, from the outside, I think the house is fantastic. I am completely jealous of this view, <laughs> but I'm very interested to see what's happening on the inside. Can we check it out? Yeah, Let's come do. on All in. Right. This is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Ah, thank you. It's really nice how in this house you just come into this big open space in the center. Yeah, I mean, I think part of being in this house is not wanting to fill it with a bunch of stuff. So much of living tiny, people try to make things like multifunctional, but actually in the day to day, I crave, I think we both crave open space. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the the open space feels really good throughout the day. I think it keeps yeah. off the shrinking walls of a tiny house. Yeah, it makes it feel sure. very open. There is a temptation to fill it up. You see a lot of the double loft tiny houses mm -hmm. and just all of the space is full of something. And our sense is that that just actually makes it feel smaller yeah. and even act a little bit smaller. All of a sudden it's hard to maneuver around. Yeah. This we thought felt like living in, like a, normal moving in a normal house. And yeah. the high ceilings, mm -hmm. yeah. And so immediately upon entering the space, we have your dining table here. Yeah. yeah, you know, we set up, it's sort of like a little bar table, utility table, and then we have a bigger dining room table outside. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we eat outside. Yeah, But this is perfect for, you know, for reading and breakfast, for coffee, doing a little work and stuff like work. that. Yeah. Honestly, this table is so cool because you can just pop open the garage door and sit at the table and you're inside, away from the elements, yeah. but you're also outside. It's a great place, yeah. too, to have dinner and you get the sunset going right behind oh, you, yeah. which is pretty great. When yeah. it's not blinding you, <laughs> but most of the time it's great. And then behind the table, you have this stunning feature wall. Yeah. The, yeah, the accent wall was another one of those places where it's tempting to try and use it for shelves or something like that. We decided, no, let's leave it open and let's do like an art installation instead. Yeah. Be cool. So we found a local guy in, in Nashville to do that for us custom and it's worked out really well. And it looks like there's something going on here with these stairs. Yeah, so we can actually pull out all of these stairs yeah. and there's a huge table underneath that will set up for 12 people for a dining room table inside. You know, going into mm -hmm. it, we wanted to have a tiny house but still be able to host dinner parties, mm -hmm. but the actual lived experience is just, it's not practical. It's nice to have for parties and stuff like that, yeah. but from the day to day, yeah, it ends up just being deep storage. And then the kitchen up here is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I love having the different layers in the home. It makes it feel so much more spacious mm -hmm. to be able to step up into the kitchen, step up into the bedroom. It makes it all feel like its own distinct space. Mm -hmm. And certainly no compromise on the appliances in here. Yeah, we've got basically everything in here. We've got a five gas burner, we've got a full sink, mm -hmm. a dishwasher, a full-size fridge, and a and washer, washer dryer in, in here. here too to make the bathroom a little bigger. I think that was yeah. something that happened last minute. It's worked out really well having this in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, cooking's a big part of our lives. We yeah, do it every Spencer day. Used I to used be to a, work as a chef, yeah. and so it, it was important to us to have like a really nice filled out kitchen. Mm -hmm. The only thing that maybe we don't have is a full-size stove. We went with a mini convection, but we went with a ceramic grill outside. I think yeah. it's like a thing that you can do with tiny houses. The more you can move stuff outside, the more you can open up the inside. Absolutely, and especially when you get to cook with that view. Yeah. And again, having the benefit of being in a climate zone that really allows you to spend a lot of time outside makes perfect sense. Yeah, we grill out almost, yeah. almost every night. We're eating outside and spending the days inside and outside. It's great. And the copper backsplash just makes for such a lovely feature in here. Yeah, thank you. We tried to get a lot of things that age well in the house. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a neat opportunity to have a lot of exposed wood. And copper has this neat effect of patinaing over time. So mm -hmm. we've really enjoyed to watch that age with the house. It's a cool effect to have stuff that, yeah. that grows older. And then your bedroom behind, that looks so cozy. Yeah. This is the, my favorite room of the house. Definitely. It's amazing. So we've got doors over here that close it off mm -hmm. because having separation in the house was so important to us. We mm -hmm. really did not want just a studio on wheels. And the bedroom is like a cave in there. We've got a king size bed yeah. 
and picture windows all around. And it's just, if you lie down and look back at night and see the stars, it just is the most amazing feeling. Yeah, you kind of feel like you're just floating through the sky a yeah. little bit. It's a very cool thing. Yeah. And then it looks like you've been able to build in some additional storage under there as well. Yeah, so the bed is on hydraulic lifts, so it's still pretty heavy, but, but it, it lifts has up. a lot of room underneath. Yeah. I mean, 100 cubic feet, I think. Tons of storage. I mean, honestly, we have too much storage in the house between under the bed and under the kitchen. Yeah, we definitely yeah. use all of our storage. Yeah. There's no such thing as too much storage, <laughs> certainly not enough. <laughs> and then what do we have down the other end of the home? So down to the left, we've got a little office space, and then to the right, we've got our bathroom, and then upstairs, we have our daughter's room. Very nice. How old is your daughter now? She's three. That's great, and she's got her own little room up yeah, there. Yeah, that was really important to us. Um, you know, we tried co-sleeping. It did not work for yeah, us and for, for our us. daughter. Sleep's a little too um, important. Yeah, <laughs> so we knew we wanted to have her have her own room, but we didn't want the whole loft taking up the space. So we have this really cool L-shaped loft where basically a twin-size bed fits in. That's where she sleeps. And then she has a little play space in the foot of the bed, and that allows us to have this high ceiling and office space. So I'm able to fold up the desk and then fold it back away when I'm not using it. And then your daughter accesses her loft via the ladder there. Yeah, she does. And honestly, we were a little bit nervous about it to begin with, but we have not had any issues yeah. with it. She's well, been using it since she was one. We majorly over-engineered the ladder. It's very heavy, but it drops down. And when you drop it down, it's really laid out more like steps mm -hmm. than a ladder. So she's got two handrails, and it's really pretty easy. Yeah. And lots of other kids use it too, so it's not just her. And then around the corner is that your bathroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got a full-size closet in here, walk-in closet, and a shower and mm -hmm. sink and toilet. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the closet space was important to us. It's really easy access. We could walk into it. I really feel like everything's maybe the smallest room in the house, but the when bathroom, you're using it, everything yeah. feels really about full size. The shower's full size. Yeah, and the river stone and adding little luxuries like that Plus our shower head is the Nevia shower head, which makes it feel like a kind of spa sauna mm -hmm. experience inside. But we're hoping to add a cedar soak tub outside. outside. So hopefully that makes you not want the bathroom as much, you know. I think a cedar soaking <laughs> tub outside would be the absolute perfect thing to finish this home off. Mm -hmm. We think so too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so how long have you been living in the home now? So we've had this home for a little over two and a half years. I think we were in it for yeah. about a year and a half Before full time, and then we started playing around with yeah. renting. We would do it for two or three months and come back and check on it, and now we're doing a little bit longer kind of each time. And so when you are living in here, you're a family of three, and how's that all working out? I mean, pretty yeah, seamless. I, love it. I think so much of it is we're also in California, so it pushes us to go outside. Mm -hmm. We spend, though we live in our home, we mostly sleep in it. We spend a lot of time outside and hiking and exploring. And, mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. it's fun. Esher has lots of different places where she can go. It's not just like one big house. She can go out to the tent, then she can come around to the mm -hmm. deck, and she can wander off. We're out in the country, so there's a lot more ability for her to just kind of be a kid and play around yeah. and get dirty and stuff like that. I don't it's think she notices at all. Oh, she, I mean, yeah, she, she loves, loves it. This yeah, house. she loves coming yeah. back. Her cute little bed and the little, yeah. that's, everything's her size. I think it's fun. And what did this house cost you to build? Our budget for the house was 130 and yeah. that was a few years ago. And at that time, it seemed like a lot to pay for tiny mm -hmm. homes, honestly. Yeah, we really felt like we were stepping into the market and trying to build just the most the expensive one house, yet. Yeah. I mean, this is what it seemed like. And yeah. since the market has really gone up for these sorts of houses tremendously, and they're all custom. So I think mm -hmm. if you were getting it done now, it's probably closer to 190 mm -hmm. or 200 if you were to go to a builder and redo this house. It's so special. This home is our very first home together. Yeah, and it's named after our daughter. It's called the Escher, which is our daughter's name. And, you know, going into it, we wanted something of our own. And this is the first thing that we've really had of yeah. our own. And we had to downsize, of course, going into the tiny house. But it's really helped us see how little we care about stuff. Yeah, that's true. And it helps us focus in on the stuff that really matters, which is obviously people and connections, but also nice things. I mean, we still love things, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to be able to get rid of the junk and all the crap in your life and just focus on the stuff that you really love. And. I feel like the word that keeps coming to mind when I think about what tiny houses have taught 
me is how to chase freedom. It feels so nice and so free to kind of be able to think outside of the box. So what's your next travel plan? So we're going to Spain in yeah. a few weeks for about a month. Very yeah. nice. Well, I think this home is just so beautiful. I love the freedom that it's afforded you. Thank I you. love that you're able to travel so much of the year and it really is just such a great space. Thank you so much for sharing Thank it you. with me. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Rose. Thanks. <laughs> This home is absolutely stunning. And I think what Bella and Spencer have done with it is really quite clever. They've created a lovely home for themselves for one third of the year, and the other two thirds of the year when it's rented out, it provides them with the income to do what they want. They're making this house work for them, and that is brilliant.